today's session on aerial photography. Now, let's understand what is photography and why do we click photographs. Photography is something that we try to click our pictures and save, uh, save those for our memory. Okay. Now, uh, in Google Earth or Google Maps, you have uh, seen terrains. Okay. So, those are all kind of aerial photography, the pictures that we click from the surface above us. Okay, and what we are trying to do is we are trying to capture the picture of the earth. So if I have uh, a camera with me, okay, and I am trying to capture my picture, okay, I am trying to take a selfie. So I will keep a camera in this position so it would capture my face. But similarly, if I want to capture the face of the earth, I will have to keep the camera in a horizontal position so that all the pictures below can be captured. So this is something or the picture here shows an uh, image of aerial photography. So aerial photography can be taken by various means. You can take it by aircraft. You have balloons, helicopters or anything that flies in the air above us can take aerial photographs. These aerial photographs depict various features on the earth. So you have kind of buildings here, the roads here. Uh, this picture is a picture from the night. So you have the various lightings that can be seen and the street view that is visible. This is the main purpose of taking aerial photography. When we talk about aerial photography, uh, Google Maps, Google Earth, they all have pictures of the landscape of the earth. So these pictures try to depict the face of the earth and the face of the earth can be only depicted when we keep the camera in a horizontal fashion and try to capture the ground here. So this is a kind of camera from which we are trying to capture the image of the ground. If I take a horizontal, uh, if I take a vertical view of say a mountain, it would look something like this. Okay, So this is the view I am taking from the front. But similarly, if I take a view from the top of the sky on this ground, it would appear like bumps here. Okay, So this is the difference between a regular photography or a kind, uh, or a kind of selfie that we take and an aerial photography. The aerial photography view is from the top while a regular photograph you try to take it from the front. So we have talked about what is a regular photography, what is an aerial photography. In aerial photography there is one more important concept that we need to understand is through means of aerial photography we can capture color infrared photography. So this color infrared photography helps us to see things which are not visible by human eye. Besides this, let's talk about what is a difference between understanding or talking about a map and an aerial photograph and why do we nowadays focus more on aerial photographs rather than maps. Map is something that we are trying to project a three-dimensional surface on a two-dimensional sheet. So if you have a three-dimensional surface of Earth's landscape and that you are trying to portray on a two-dimensional surface, that would give you a map. A map is usually directionally and geometrically much more accurate. In contrast to this, a aerial photograph has a huge amount of radial distortion. We will be talking radial distortion in details in the further sessions. But just a basic preview of what is radial distortion. When we are clicking a photograph of the topography of or the landscape of the earth, there are certain kinds of distortions that come up and these distortion needs to be removed. So when we are talking about these distortions, we need to understand how there are changes. Okay, 
so aerial photographs talk about radial distortions but the best thing here is these radial distortions can now be corrected by GIS as a result aerial photographs have gained huge popularity in the recent days as compared to the conventional mapping methods now let's talk about few terms when we talk about aerial photography we understand that it's kind of taking pictures of the earth or the uh, capturing the face of the earth what is the difference between aerial photography and aerial photogrammetry aerial photogrammetry is the science of measuring the geometrical distances or measuring the exact distances or geometric objects is what is aerial photogrammetry so aerial photography just talks about taking pictures of the earth while photogrammetry talks about measuring or mapping the geometrical positions there are two types of photogrammetry that we talk about one is analog and other is digital or analytical as from the name it is clear Analog photogrammetry usually talks about printing it on paper, so it's kind of hard copy version, and this is a kind of soft copy or digital version. So this is the basic difference between the two kinds of photography, photogrammetry techniques. In one, you try to take a print out on a sheet of paper and do a conventional method of understanding or depicting the landscape. While in digital or analytical photogrammetry. You try to understand or work those photographs on a uh, online platform. Those can be GIS softwares. Okay. Now, let's move on to. I have clicked a photograph from the air, which represents an aerial photograph. This photograph has various features. Whatever is there on land can be depicted in this photograph. So, what we need to do is. To understand the image that we have captured, and this image that we have captured, when we try to understand it, we call this method as image interpretation. This image interpretation basically tries to understand few basic things. First is what we are trying to understand should be visible to our eyes. We try to map it accurately. We try to perceive it, obtain various angles of the information, and finally try to analyze specific regions and specific areas. Now, how can we analyze these images? We can analyze these images based on these eight parameters. We call these eight parameters as recognition elements. These eight recognition elements include shape. If I have two things in my hand, by seeing the shape, I can say one is rectangular and one is cylindrical in shape. Okay. So there are various parameters or based on which we can recognize something that is shape, size, color or tone, texture, pattern, sign, association and shadows. Now we will be talking about each one of these one by one. So let's move on to the first thing that is shape. As I said, I gave an example right now. We can distinguish two shapes. One is kind of rectangular shape that we have talked about here, and one is a cylindrical shape. So here in the picture, I can see a kind of pentagon shape here. So this is a shape which is pentagon. So shapes can be broadly classified into geometrical or cultural shapes. Geometrical shapes can be rectangular, triangular, square, then you have pentagon, you can have linear, okay? then you can have circular shapes. While cultural, a good example can be a kind of landscape features, so you can have agricultural themes, you can have urban landscapes. You can have urban green areas and the urban skyscrapers. 
Now here is a river and this river is not flowing in the normal direction. Rather it is having a numerous curves here. And such a river is known as a meandering river. So by means of when I am clicking a picture from aerial photograph and this picture comes up, I can say this river is following a curved path and therefore this is a meandering river. I can say there is a kind of pentagon structure here. So it can be a shape of pentagon. The next topic that we would be talking about here is size. Size reveals the relativeness of big and small. Um, I can say multi, multi level or single level. So if, I, if there is a single family home, I can say it's a single family home or there can be a series of apartments which can be classified under multi level. Then you have a main river here. Okay. And you have numerous small tributaries that are merging into the main river. So I can establish size here which is relative in nature. So this is big and the remaining ones here are small. By this means I can depict or understand a photograph. By seeing that a photograph I can say there are elements which are big, there are elements which are small. So there is a big river that is flowing here and a small river that is merging into a big river. The next recognition element would be color or tone. Now color and tone is an important element so it talks about brightness or contrast. If you look at this aerial photograph, this remote, this is a remote sensing picture. Uh, taken from taken from a satellite imagery. So, if you look at this picture very closely, you can see huge set of darkness on the top, okay, and a little amount of red reddish shade below. So this dark depicts the forest, which is this fur, and this light depicts the forest, which is this odious. So based on the brightness or the contrast of the colors, we can say which image would depict which kind of vegetation pattern. There would be high turbidity or less turbidity as we can see in the previous picture also. So you have this picture. Based on this, we can say those areas which are more dark are more turbid as compared to the less dark areas. This was the third recognition element that we have talked about. We also call this as color, tone or in another word as hue. Which means we are talking about understanding the level of saturation of colors here. So you have color, tone or hue. These are the three words that are used to understand the next recognition element. The next recognition element is Texture. When I talk about texture, I would talk about something that is smooth or something that is rough. Okay. So if this surface of the phone here, I can say this is a kind of smooth surface. On the other hand, I have a duster here and the surface we can see is highly rough. So I can explain this as rough surface and smooth surface. This is an example of drainage in the tundra area and drainage usually is considered as a smooth flow. So rivers, water, river, grass or cement would all give you a smooth view. On the other hand here you can see the level of mountains. So it's a kind of rough topography or coarse topography. I can say roughness or coarseness is present here and that is usually found in forest canopy, mountain areas and the upper floors. So these are the three major areas where you can find a rough texture. In contrast to that you have a smooth texture 
In the areas where there is river or water or a drainage pattern, you have a huge amount of grass or cement present. Based on the texture, we can understand what is the kind of landscape that is present in the surface. The next is pattern. Pattern is the most simple among all the recognition elements that we have discussed. It's as simple as that. If I am arranging the four, uh, the four markers I have in a serial order, I can say they are systematically arranged. If I am keeping one marker here, other here, the next here and the last here, they are kind of randomly arranged. So that is the difference of pattern. So you have a random pattern and a evenly spaced pattern. In a vegetation field, if I am having plants growing in a systematic order, I can say these plants are evenly spaced. The space between these two plants, the vertical plants and the horizontal plants is always maintained. So it's a kind of even pattern that has been established. On the other hand, here you can see it's a kind of random pattern, mix of random pattern which can be found. So if I want to draw a random pattern, I can say there is one plant here, the other here. The next very close to this. So if I look to this figure very carefully, there is no systematic arrangement of the plants here or the vegetation here. And therefore, it's a random pattern. In contrast to this, these series of plants are systematically arranged. It seems like this is a horticultural, a horticultural area where the plants are grown for, uh, where the plants are grown in a very systematic form. So this was the next element that we have talked about. Now let's talk about shadow. By means of shadow, we can determine the height of the object. If there is an aerial photograph that is clicking a picture of this region, which is a kind of shade here, all the persons or all the things here are having a shadow here. So if I look at this picture carefully and this picture carefully, I can say, there are two poles here, okay, and then there is a wire mesh. This wire mesh has six lines. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six lines. Then you have two benches, one and two, and there is a person standing here besides the fence. So this is the height of the person that I can see in the shadow. So shadow is usually aimed to calculate height of any object that is captured through means of aerial photography. The next is sight. Sight shows the geographical or the topographical location. For example, this is a site for a nuclear reactor. So there is a kind of reactor here which can be seen in between. You have roads passing by, you have other arteries of roads that connect to it, you have kind of water bodies and other industrial suburbs that can be found here. When we talk about site or geographical location, if I say in an aerial photograph I can see a big huge depression in the ground, okay, that can be a kind of sinkhole. If I say this is a sinkhole where there is depression in the ground, that means the material of which it is formed is a kind of soft material. So I can say it's limestone. It might be limestone rather than granite. Since granite is hard, granite cannot be a good material for those depression areas. I can say it is formed of limestones. So if I say, see any such huge depression or uh, which is circular in form in the ground, I can say it is a kind of sinkhole and these sinkholes are commonly seen in areas of Florida and Central Asia. The next here is association. The very important concept and a very kind of 
for relative concepts that we need to understand. If I am trying to say there is a nuclear power plant in some area, I cannot say that nuclear power plant is established between two residential colonies. That usually cannot be a option. So association means trying to relate two things which are possible. So it's kind of relation between objects or things. If I look at this picture, I see there is a kind of air, airport district here. So if this is a airport runway, this runway should be located uh, or should be well connected to the transportation network. So you have roadways here. So you have connection of roads. You have connection of settlements or airport infrastructure here. So this airport runway must be assisted with other supporting features like roads or transport networks, railways. If I see a huge patch of white area here, I see a huge patch of black area. That means this patch of white area is somehow related to this patch of black area. And this relationship is kind of association. If I go to any urban area and I click an aerial photograph there, I find some greenery within the urban settlements. That greenery is likely to denote a park or a garden rather than I say it would be an agricultural field. So it's important to understand or kind of associate things. If I'm living into a school region or I'm clicking an uh, aerial photograph for an educational belt or a series of schools, I cannot say within those schools there would be a kind of industry. That cannot be the option as agricultural field cannot be an option in a highly dense urban area. Similarly, industry cannot be an option in a belt of educational institutes. So this is how we try to understand association areas. With this we finish the today's session on the basic class on aerial photography. You can subscribe to Exam Race channel for further lessons on aerial photography.